Fashion trends come and go, but classic style lives on forever. Greg sat down with legendary designer Mary McFadden to talk about how her worldwide travels changed American fashion one stitch at a time. There aren't many designers who can model their own clothes, but Mary McFadden's face is as familiar as her fashion. Her singular style, both behind the sketch pad and in front of the lens, made her an icon of American fashion. But it almost didn't happen. Well, actually, I fell into design backwards. I was living in Africa, and I couldn't find any clothes to buy in the stores. And I started buying African cottons. And I went to a dressmaker and I made the simplest of dresses of these beautiful textiles. And before you know it, people were buying clothes off my back. Mary McFadden dreamed of becoming a writer, not a fashion designer. Her passion for exploring world cultures led her to study sociology and anthropology in college. Do you think that either two of those subjects uh, had anything at all to do with your uh, design concepts and your, your creativity? I definitely think that anthropology runs very deep in um, my sources of inspiration. Now, is this where the, the term design archaeologist came from? Well, the design archaeologist comes from the fact that each collection was based on an ancient civilization. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I, I got coined as the archaeologist of 7th Avenue. McFadden was the first American designer to successfully weave foreign influences into haute couture. Her collections were inspired by the art and cultures of ancient Egypt, Greece, Italy, Asia, Africa, and South America. Gowns from many of those collections are being exhibited in Washington, D.C. at the National Museum of Women in the Arts. It's the first time in the museum's 22-year history that it's honored high fashion as an art form. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. I really think that fashion should be equally as important as uh, women artists because many of these dresses that you see here are paintings in their own right. So, Mary, the dresses here on exhibit today, why did you select these? Well, they're dresses that I have in my own private collection, and um, I've worn all of them. Actually, I can still fit into them. You kidding? So that's a testament to your nutritional... Uh... No, it's a testament to starvation. <laughs> <laughs> McFadden skyrocketed to fashion fame in the 1970s with her signature Mari pleating. Her distinctive designs also featured intricate quilting, hand-sewn embroidery, and jewel-encrusted fabric. McFadden favored simple silhouettes that allowed the exotic details to shine. But after 40 years as America's high priestess of high fashion, McFadden says her clothing no longer works for today's woman. Today's a very relaxed atmosphere for women who are very active within their jobs. And I realize that these kind of beautiful evening clothes are a thing of the past. And that was one of the reasons that I decided that um, I was not going to continue designing. So this was, uh, this era was a little bit more flamboyant. It was flamboyant, but now we are in an era where you'll see a store that is generic all over the world. And that's what happened to dressing. It's generic all over the world. But there is one woman you won't find on McFadden's worst dress list. I know that you actually had uh, Jackie Onassis, President Kennedy's wife, wore some of your designs. Yes, she did. And now we have a new woman in the White House, yeah, uh, she's Michelle gorgeous, Obama. And she looks gorgeous. I'm very, I'm very impressed. What impresses you about Michelle? Well, first of all, I think she's chosen very beautiful clothes for herself. They're very simple. They're well colored. And I think she's spectacular. Seems like she's brought a different kind of energy, a little less demure and... Yeah, that's definitely you know. true. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I mean, she's the modern American woman. Is the placement of that back up a bit? You just want the little one to move in. McFadden says it was her lack of formal design training that gave her the freedom to create truly unique clothing that changed the face of fashion. She's received every top industry award, including the Cody, one of the most prestigious honors in the fashion field. And while you might not expect it from this real thin size too, McFadden was a trophy winner in other fields as well. Now, we haven't talked about this, but you were quite athletic. I probably have more tennis trophies than I have fashion trophies, but it could be even. I could have had a lot of golf trophies, but 
the trouble was that golf took really too much time. Mm -hmm. And so I had to give golf up when I was about 17, even that I had a handicap then of about nine. Are you serious? I'm a golfer too. Big What's golfer. your handicap? I played to a seven or eight. Oh, okay, so yeah. I could have played with you. Yeah, oh, you could have probably beaten me. Yeah, I, 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 I'm strokes. sure <laughs> I would have tried to beat you. <laughs> and as for that fascination with fashion, McFadden takes a philosophical point of view. This is something extraordinary. And the human being always needs something extraordinary. So there they are on the red carpet. And that's a dream. It's something extraordinary. It takes us out of the commonality of our life.